hello everyone and welcome to uh, Mechanical Engineering Open Days at the University of Dundee. Uh, first, we have uh, Professor Robert uh, Kitsch talking, so the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Carolina. So hello everybody and welcome to our, our Open Day. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about mechanical engineering and mechanical renewables at the University of Dundee. So I'm Professor Robert Keach and I'll be joined by my colleague Dr Keith Johnson who's the programme lead for these programmes and we'll take you through some of the things we do at Dundee. So to start off with it's, a, it's very unfortunate you haven't managed to come to Dundee today hopefully with the restrictions and lockdown um, being reduced you should be able to come here in the next few months um, certainly for a visit and I think we're going to be doing an actual campus uh, open day near uh, towards Christmas again with numbers in Covid if they get reduced. So if you come to Dundee we're on the east coast of Scotland quite a, a beautiful a beautiful part of the world first of all um, protected from the west coast and all the rain um, sunniest city in Scotland is Dundee and we're about 60 miles from Aberdeen, Edinburgh and about 70 miles from Glasgow. So quite a nice central location. Um, five minutes in every direction we're in the countryside and we're sitting on the mouth of the River Tay. So lots of water sports and hiking and even skiing are all within very easy access of Dundee. So it's a beautiful location. Um, guaranteed uh, accommodation for first year. So when you come in here, lots of halls of residence that you can go into, but also lots of private residences as well. Very cheap um, and we'll get to that in the next slide. OK, next slide, please, Keith. So yeah, so a vibrant student city, about 15,000 students uh, on campus when uh, when when term starts. Uh, it's a city based campus, so no need to commute. All the accommodations within walking distance and the city centre is only five minutes from the main campus. Um, as I said earlier on, accommodation is guaranteed, but also very affordable living in Dundee. It's about 14% cheaper than the UK average, which means your money goes a lot further and you end up with really nice residences, but also easier to live in that kind of environment, certainly as a student. And as you can see behind me in my in my shot here, this is the VNA, but there's a, a billion pound waterfront re redevelopment going on in Dundee at the moment on the on the side of the Tay. So we've got City of Discovery, which is a, a, a ship um, along with the VNA Design Museum. So lots of arts and crafts and things setting up and lots of nice cafes and a beautiful place to, to come and also um, to be a student. So the university itself, if we move on to the structure, university has got uh, 10 schools. I see them here, School of Art and Design, Dentistry, Business, Education, Life Sciences, Medicine, Nursing, Humanities and Social Science, and right in the middle, Science and Engineering, which is the school I'm from. Now it's important, I've put myself in the middle here because the School of Science and Engineering is really a hub for all these schools. We do a lot of interdisciplinary and cross-disciplinary work. So you'll see as I go through these talks and, and myself and Keith, we'll be talking about things like medical engineering, where we work with maybe the doctors and nurses and dentists in actually looking at problems Problem solving. So engineering is problem solving. So anything that comes up in healthcare, we can then work at it. The same with art and design. It's very much a design and product design. We can work with people from across all of these kind of sectors and schools uh, and use that engineering ability. If we take that down a further level, then the School of Science and Engineering, um, it has what were known as disciplines or departments. Um, and these are the standard ones you'd expect to see in science and engineering, so maths and physics and computing. The engineering we do at Dundee is civil engineering, mechanical, electronic and biomedical. And then this one at the top here, which is CAHID, which is the Centre for Anatomy and Human Identification. Again, you wouldn't necessarily expect that in a School of Science and Engineering, but this is kind of anatomy and forensic. So you can see the link there between kind of life sciences, medicine and engineering, where problems that come up in, let's say, ballistics or in trauma or anatomy, can we can apply our engineering principles and applications uh, in this kind of area. So again, it shows again the cross disciplinary area um, of engineering as a whole. Moving to the next slide, please. So if I take that down another level then, within the discipline of mechanical electronic engineering, we run a number of undergraduates and postgraduate programmes. The undergraduate programmes here are in blue, um, the postgraduate ones are in red. Uh, one of the first questions I normally get asked at this stage is do we do a five year MEng, which some universities do. We do that in civil engineering, but not in mechanical engineering. And the main reason for that is, you know, engineering as a whole and engineers are so well sought after, uh, it's certainly from Dundee University, that most people after the four years go straight into, uh, into jobs in industry. 
if you want the five year experience at university, we offer a standalone one year MSc, a master's, which is a postgraduate course rather than an undergraduate course. So what you're seeing here in the blue are four year degree courses in mechanical, mechanical with renewables and electronic, which has been reviewed at the moment. Um, and then at the end of four years, if you want to do a, a, an extra year, you can do that in a specialized subject. So if you move on to the next slide, we'll talk a bit more about those postgraduate ones in a second. So again, here they have a bit more detail. So the undergraduates, I, I've said ordinary or honours here because the ordinary degree is a three year course. You can leave after three years of university with an ordinary degree. It's an unclassified degree um, and that's fine. We've had a couple of people do that in the past due to either financial reasons or they've been offered the job. We actually had a student a few years ago who had a summer, a summer internship in third year with an oil company and got offered a £120,000 salary to go to Bahrain um, and was kind of, what do I do? Do I come back and finish my honours degree or do I take the job? Well, it was a bit of a no brainer for him and off he went, but he always wanted to keep his options open if he wanted to come back and actually finish his honours degree. Most people would do the four year honours degree. That's what you sign up for. And at the end then of four years, you will get an, a classified honours degree in mechanical engineering or mechanical with renewables. We also have this BEng in engineering design and manufacture, which is a new um, kind of scheme. It's only been running about two or three years, which is a graduate level apprenticeship and slightly different from our normal full time um, degree. This way you are actually employed by a company and they'll do day release. So they'll release you for one day a week to come to university to do your course. And in the same four year period, you'll get an honours degree, but in all the, the rest of the time, you're actually in a company working. So that option is available and you'll probably find some um, uh, 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 videos and things on that in, in the VFAIR environment today, um, in the auditorium if you want to ask more questions about how you sign up for that. But that's another option for an undergraduate programme in engineering. So then if we move on to the next slide, we have the postgraduate programs. So I've, I've kind of told you about the fact you can specialize in one year after your, uh, after your honors degree. You could do that in any university. A lot of universities have one year master's courses and the ones in Dundee I'd like to kind of highlight and these are our specialty subjects are the ones you can see listed here. So the first two are actually linked directly with the business school. So again, back to this cross disciplinary nature, the fact that we work with with colleagues in the business school, some of the modules are taught by the business school. So things like industrial engineering and management, industrial engineering, and international finance, you'll get modules from both the business school and from the engineering school. And both of these have a 12 week placement in industry at the end of them. So you basically go into industry, you work with a company, getting your master's degree and then often get offered a job by that company. So it's a really nice kind of way of honing you into a company, working with that company and then then getting full employment at the end of it. We have two new ones on the books which are starting this September, which are the top two blue ones there. So the MSA Industrial Engineering with Entrepreneurship and Digital Marketing and, a, and the one below that Renewable Energy is being developed for the year after. We also have links with the medical school. So Nine Wells Teaching Hospital in Dundee is the largest teaching hospital, one of the largest teaching hospitals in Europe. And evidently we're training doctors and nurses and dentists and so on. So again, we do a lot of work with healthcare. So for instance, designing new um, surgical devices or prosthetics or implants. And that uh, leads us to these kind of master's courses in biomedical engineering. If we're looking at imaging like ultrasound or MRI, that of course is an MSc in medical imaging. And again, it's engineers who end up getting trained in this kind of field. So that takes us on to the next slide, uh, which looks at the actual structure of the course. So again, we'll come to this at the Q&A session, but um, the first and second year are mostly common subjects, things like physics and maths. But the big push of Dundee University and certainly our course is the, is the kind of lab, laboratory practical research led teaching. So from the get go, you'll be put inside um, a, a team of other engineers and you'll work together on solving a problem. That could be anything. It could be building a wind turbine to designing another Formula One car. And from that, you'll make mistakes, you'll learn, but you're developing these kind of problem solving skills from the get go. And every single year you have these team projects, which uh, Dr. Johnson will be talking about in, 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 his, in his few slides. The physics and maths underpin all your engineering. And when I get to the bottom of this slide, you see here it says physics and maths help engineers to solve problems. It's again one of the questions that are very common from students going into engineering is do I need to like physics? Do I need to like maths? Which you might not like very much at school, but they're, they're, you, you soon understand that these um, core subjects are there to help engineers solve problems. So maths is a language, 
we teach maths so that it makes engineers um, uh, the job for engineers much simpler um, using equations and so on. So we can solve very complex things by using mathematics and physics. The applications in physics is very much the kind of bridging between um, uh, maths and engineers. So both those subjects kind of underpin everything we do in engineering. So as I say, back to the start of this one, first and second year mostly common. It means we have this flexibility at the end of first year to actually transfer between engineering degrees. So if you come in, let's say, as a biomedical engineer or as a civil engineer, at the end of first year, you can transfer into mechanical engineering if, uh, second year if you've passed all your exams. So there's that flexibility if you're not quite sure which engineering discipline it is you want to do. The same in second year slightly different because there are some modules in second year which are specific to the engineering degree. For instance, you'll be doing anatomy rather than thermodynamics if you do biomedical. So to go into third year, you'd need to do some catching up if you wanted to transfer. But we still allow students to do that based on your grades. And if you if you if you've done well in second year uh, and do a bit of background reading, we can we sometimes allow you to go into third year of another discipline. Then when you get into third year, however, it is very specialist. So at that stage, you can't transfer between them without going back a year to do that. Um, and as I say, as you see here, you can graduate at the end of year three with an ordinary degree. There's an early exit point. As I said again earlier on, most people then go into the fourth year and in fourth year, rather than a group project, there's an individual project. So you get to choose it. You get to decide where your interests lie. So you've had three years of engineering and you now know what you like in engineering. So you can then concentrate all your efforts into that in, in your final year. And that's worth a big percentage of your final degree mark. We also have in our particular programs a one year optional placement in industry between years three and four. So that means you can take a year out. So at the end of year three, if you've passed all your exams, you can go into industry for a year, so up to 11, 12 months uh, working in the company and then coming back into fourth year to finish your degree. Now that's particularly opt uh, at the moment because uh, when I get onto some slides, when I talk about CERN, we now have a, uh, we've just secured some funding. It's called the Turing Mobility Scheme, which allows students to actually go into CERN, which is where the Large Hadron Collider is in Geneva. Um, starting this October, actually, we're going to be sending five students out there for 11 months and they'll be using this opt out year in industry. So they'll be working in the labs of Geneva for a year and then coming back to finish their honours year in, in September 2022. So again, brilliant opportunities at Dundee. And these are the kind of questions I hope you're going to be asking about why Dundee, what's so special, what are our, what are our kind of strengths? And these are certainly the things that we do at Dundee. But it is optional and a lot of people just go through the four years. There's a lot of chance to work in industry anyway as part of the course. So you don't have to take a year out um, and, and unless you want to. OK, next slide. So that takes us then on to um, the kind of jobs, the careers. Again, lots of students ask, you know, what is a mechanical engineer? What, what am I likely to be doing at the end of my four years? Uh, and also, what kind of money am I likely to be earning? And here's a kind of, I mean, this, this slide could have, could have probably had about 50 um, job titles on it, but the kind of standard things um, you would find in mechanical engineering um, are linked to motion. So engineering with things that move or materials and things in them. So anything from the infrastructure and transport um, to aerospace, sports science and medical engineering, subsea, so both oil and now renewables, power generation, oil and gas, renewable energy, food and drink, design, uh, high tech manufacturing and automotive. Some of these you are obvious. I mean, a lot of people stereotype a mechanical engineer with somebody who fixes your car. But of course, we're talking about professional engineers who would not just fix your car, but they would design the car, they would build the car, they would look at all the manufacturing techniques involved in it, and then um, implement all the kind of safety features and smart sensors that now you find in every car going around. So there's an awful lot more to it than just being able, you know, a car mechanic. Um, and there are an awful lot of areas of engineering that are applied um, to mechanical engineering. So the salaries you'd get on the back of these are typically in the high, a high 20s, 30,000 would be a graduate salary. If you're in the oil and gas industry, you'd probably double or triple that. And as I said earlier on, we had a third year student who was earning 120,000 pounds as a starting salary as a third year student. So it really just depends which sector you go into. But these are really good salaries. I mean, it's a, you know, and mechanical engineering, even if you decide not to come to Dundee, would be a really good chosen profession for any, uh, for any student leaving school or college who wants to graduate and get a job straight away from the end of it. And again, and the success is in we get a lot of employment agencies coming to us every year saying whatever we do at Dundee keep doing it because the students that come from Dundee are highly sought after in all these industries. Okay next slide please. 
So a little bit more about what we do at Dundee then. So uh, again, back to the automotive. So we have what's called the drive team, which is the Dundee racing team, uh, where we do what's called formula student. Uh, this is an opportunity as a society run out of mechanical engineering to basically design build and then race your own 600cc racing car. So you can see some slides here showing some of the various um, cars that have been built over the years. And at the end of the year, you get to take it down to Silverstone after the British Grand Prix and race against other teams from other universities around Europe. So really great opportunity. So if you're really into your kind of automotive, this is a perfect opportunity to do that. And we've had a number of students who've evidently done this as part of their four year um, time at Dundee and then gone on to work as project engineers in some of the big Formula One teams um, like McLaren, Red Bull, Lotus, etc. Um, based around uh, Oxfordshire. So again, a really good way to get into that area and, uh, of, of, uh, of sports if you want to. Uh, next slide, please. So we'll touch on this with some of the project work, but again, design engineers are in huge demand. So you, if you like sitting in front of a computer and using some of the 3D CAD packages and manufacturing packages, you can do that and you'll learn all about that at Dundee. We'll train you up. You, there's no expectation you, you know any of this. So you'll come into this um, with a zero expectations of any knowledge and we will then train you up and get you certified in kind of the industrial standards. So you can do anything from simulations to, as you can see in the top right, to actually builds, you know, 3D printing and manufacturing of components and devices. So that design and manufacture is really, are, are, you know, looking at materials and all the different new materials that are now available um, to how you would then implement them into a design or into a manufacturing process. Next slide, please. So the few slides on uh, renewables. So this is a huge area. You're probably aware that the COP26 uh, is, is happening this year. That's the Conference of Parties. Um, they've already met a couple of times, but they're coming up to Glasgow in November. And this is looking at zero carbon emissions and kind of it's, it's a world stage at the moment in Scotland and the UK for how we meet these kind of targets being set by the Paris Accord and so on. Now, Scotland's ahead of the game. We're actually, we've set targets five years ahead of the rest of the UK. So by 2035, we're looking for zero carbon. Um, we've already surpassed all our deadlines for um, uh, renewables. And actually, we generate now more electricity. That, well, all our electricity is now 100% from renewables. And we're actually exporting a lot of that. But that doesn't include things like transport and industry. And those are the big ones that we're trying to move towards between between now and 2035. So if you do come into um, mechanical engineering or mechanical engineering with renewables, there are going to be an awful lot of jobs in the next 10, 15 years in this sector. And it's they're kind of displacing the oil and gas industry because of course as we move away from carbon fuels we're going to be moving into things like hydro you know wave power solar uh, and wind turbines so next slide and I'll, I'll take you through some of those so evidently again by Scotland's location we're very fortunate you know I think about 25 percent of renewable power is <laughs> in Europe is actually on Scotland's doorstep because of the weather things like the west coast and the Atlantic means we've got tremendous powerful waves that come in on the west coast of Scotland and we're looking at ways of harnessing that power by new technologies and processes um, to generate electricity by absorbing the, the energy coming from the wave. And that can be underwater uh, impellers and propellers, which are like turbines, which turn when the, the tide goes over them to big things like the Palama sea snake, which basically goes up and down on the surface as the waves move over it and again generate power. But this is a huge and evolving sector which people are looking to all the time. Next slide, please. And then we... Oh, then we move on to solar. So solar is another big one. Um, don't think of it in, in Scotland and spe specifically in the UK, but Dundee is the sunniest city in Scotland. And I'm quite amazed actually when I drive around, sometimes I see um, solar fields, so fields full of solar panels generating power, um, which is amazing. Uh, and actually the solar cell, the, the photovoltaic the PV was actually developed in Scotland and actually at Dundee University. So back in the 1960s, they were messing around with silicon and putting some dopants in it and realized they could make amorphous silicon. And if you shone, shone light on it, it generated power. Um, unfortunately, at the time, they didn't have the, the UK didn't have the initiative to kind of think that the, the small amount of power that was being generated was, was for any use. Uh, and in the end, I think big companies in Japan took over this idea and microelectronics was born. But the fact it was actually designed and built in Scotland in Dundee University in the physics department kind of come, shows it's come home to rest. So solar, again, is, a, is, is, is big in Dundee and it's certainly big in Scotland. And it's something we're now trying to make more efficient. Uh, next slide, please. 
So then looking at other applications, um, I've, I've mentioned Nine Wells uh, Teaching Hospital, um, but evidently as a mechanical engineer, you can be involved in lots of things to do with medicine and healthcare. Um, we do have a degree in biomedical engineering, but the mechanical engineering one as well allows you to actually ad ad uh, adapt and, and um, uh, develop those skills, uh, working with surgeons on things like robotics and prosthetics, implants and materials that go inside the body to new exploratory surgical devices like colonoscopes or gastroscopes and so on. And the picture here is actually an MRI scanner with uh, the arrow pointing to a robot. This is an, a, a surgical intervention robot. Uh, the, the, the challenge here, if you know anything about MRI scanners, is the fact they've got high magnetic fields. So we had to build a robot that had no metal parts on it and no um, inductive parts. So when this goes in on top of the patient during an MRI scan, the surgeon can be outside the building or outside the, the, this particular room and do some interventions um, during the procedure. So a lot of things that mechanical engineers then get involved in with, with, with surgical applications. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this also links to things like medical uh, imaging. So you can see this bottom right one, which is uh, looking at thermal imaging of the hand to show blood flow. Um, in this case, this particular patient had poor circulation. So the fingers are black, showing that there's no blood being flowing into the to the fingers, but the rest of the hand is showing kind of heat spots. And again, we use the same technology when we're looking at m instruments or uh, devices where they're heating up or losing heat uh, and we can thermally map them. Uh, the one next to this is showing a gastroscope, again, a mechanical engineer device for going down the back of the nose. Uh, it's like an inspection camera, which can basically move and flex like a little snake or a worm, and you make it very thin and very um, inobtrusive if you can to actually pass it into the person's throat or into their stomach to take biopsies to actually do explore, exploration. Again, if these kind of things you go, oh, no, I don't, I don't like medical things, that's fine. It's just showing applications of mechanical devices. So it's sh showing you the the broad range. But equally, if you were thinking of doing a medicine degree because you're interested in that, you could do it, not a medical degree, but by doing a, a mechanical engineering degree, you can get involved in healthcare and medical uh, based applications. Uh, next slide, please. And that kind of leads into this one as well, which is forensic. So for all those who watch things like, I don't know, NCIS and so on on the TV, um, you know, where they are solving crime by using science, using physics and so on. We do very much do that. So back to the initial slide where we talked about CAHID, the Center for Anatomy and Human Identification, where they look at forensics. We then can apply some of the mechanical principles to this. So things like developing the next generation of bulletproof vests from Kevlar to looking at uh, things like blunt force trauma or knife attack. And we can actually model it so we can end up saying that if there's an injury, how that injury was done, you know, was it wielded from a six foot man or a four foot six woman or four foot six man? And you can work out the power that was implied at the at the point of injury and maybe use that in a criminal case to actually support um, evidence that's going forward. So again, if you're interested in that, we do that um, as part of our kind of third and fourth year, and you could end up doing a project in that for your fourth year if you if you were so uh, so wanted. Next slide, please. So then back to some of our teaching, um, as I say, Dr. Keith Johnson will be talking a lot more about the kind of things we teach you, but very much one of the reasons for coming to Dundee is the practical sessions we do. We do an awful lot of work in lab based and working together in groups. Um, they, you get you gather lots of information, not just from what we do around uh, the group work, but also going out into industry. In Turgi, you get an industrial project set by a local company, um, which you then have to work with the company to solve. Um, we've talked about things like going down to Silverstone with the Formula student team, but also on this slide here, you can see things like the CERN reactor, so the Large Hadron Collider. Again, we don't just do that as a year between years three and four to go out there, but actually I had five students last year all working in their honours project with colleagues in CERN. So they were actually daily speaking to um, uh, their opposite number in the CERN laboratories and working on part of the experimental procedures that were going on um, in, in, on the, in the Large Hadron Collider. Um, I think the other slide here, you can see the last slide here is actually um, the Rolls-Royce. Uh, so we have contacts with the Rolls-Royce in Glasgow. And again, students go down there. We've got a couple of our students are actually working as project managers there now and employing a lot of the staff. And they work on things like the Trent uh, uh, airplane engines. So a lot of servicing and design of new engines is done down in these little laboratories. So again, our students get to go down, walk around and speak to the Rolls-Royce employees about the kind of jobs they'll be doing when they graduate. 
And then finally, um, we move on to the global experience. So again, an opportunity if you come to Dundee to start thinking about what you can do during the degree. So not just coming to university and spending four years with us and graduating, but actually having the opportunity to work with industry during that time. So as I said, you have the placement industry, the opportunity to do one year or up to a year in industry between years three and four, and that could be CERN or anywhere else. Um, also then we're still running Erasmus. So although the Brexit's kicked in, we're still doing Erasmus exchanges, which allow you to take a semester or a year in another university in Europe. Um, and that's just a direct swap. So you could basically work in any of the European institutes as long as we can map the course that you would have done in Dundee with them. And again, that gives you great experience. In the old days, that was difficult because you needed a language, but now more and more all uh, these universities in Europe are, are actually teaching in English. So it means you can go there very easily and then um, pick up you know, the experience of that institute and then come back to continue your course at Dundee. If you want to go further afield, definitely we have the global exchange, which means you can go to places out, out with the European Union. And we have really good um, uh, partnerships with schools in China. Um, again, we do summer schools. We have a lot of Chinese students coming over to join our cohorts in third and fourth year and allow you to go there to work if you want to do part of your internship or part of your course there. But also, of course, more English speaking places in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, America. These are all open to you to spend a year or a semester in if you want to do that as part of your four year degree at Dundee. So that's just a very quick overview of all the things we're doing at the moment. Um, I think it's going to be a question and answer session at the end. I'll stay online to do that. But at the moment, I'm just going to pass over to my colleague, who's uh, Dr. Keith Johnson, who's the program lead for um, our, our, our undergraduate degree programs. So thank you for that. Many thanks, Robert, for the for the introduction. Um, just as Robert said, yes, we have the Q&A function in the chat. So if you have anything about anything I've discussed during the next few slides, just feel free to use the Q&A and ask the question. All questions are good in my experience. So just before I talk about the, the program in detail, I'd like to mention the Teaching Excellent Framework. So this is known as the TEF, and it was first introduced by the UK government in 2017 and was really designed to recognise universities for their excellence in teaching. So I'm very pleased to say that the University of Dundee has achieved the highest possible award. So we achieved the gold award in TEF, and that's within the entire university. So to discuss the project a little bit more, so for mechanical engineering and with renewables, students are all together in, in the first year and we have a set of core subjects that you will take in the first year. So we have subjects such as mathematics, mechanics, thermodynamics, waves and mechanics, which all of these, these subjects, they include practical labs. So we really do pride ourselves to be a bit different from other universities. We have a lot of practical labs uh, for the students to complete various different projects. So we have an example here of a wind turbine project where you work together in groups and you get each student gets a job role where they have to build, design and test this wind turbine. So you can see here the turbine's been put in front of a fan. If you connect that to a water pump, you can actually measure the amount of water that's uh, created by your turbine over time. So it really gives a measurement of efficiency. So it's a, a five week project and it's normally it's quite a fun project that the students get to undertake during this time. So this is a practical element, but we also have uh, uh, tutorials and lectures to be able to back up this content. In the second semester, we begin to learn a little bit more about robotics. So we have got the university edition of Lego Mindstorm. So you can see many different types of robots that have been designed here. And at the heart of these robots, we have what's known as a brick. So we can connect various different sensors, such as inputs, such as sound, touch or light sensors. And then we can begin, on, begin to understand if there is an input, we can also have an output. So we can control the robot itself, so we can control its motion, for example. So it is an introduction to programming. And, and don't worry if you don't know anything about programming before the university, we expect to teach you all that during your time in, in the program. But it's basically a drag and drop style interface where students begin to learn how to do this. And to do it, we have a bit of a, a project where here's an example of a robot that's been built and it has to follow a line autonomously by itself, pick up objects of specific colours and deliver them from one point to another. So it's just an example of this type of project. In the second half of engineering project, uh, what do we get to complete? We begin to get an introduction to computer edit design. So we have a, a CAD model that's been created here on the top right, which is a, a bike frame. And what we can do is then we can begin to understand how we can design and we can manufacture through additive manufacturing. 
So we can import this frame, for example, into a, a software, such as a 3D printing software, and we can understand the different settings, such as the print speed or the layer height or the infill density. And that means we can quickly create these prototypes using dedicated 3D printers. We have many, many different 3D printers inside of the program. We have 28 for this particular model module, and the students basically get to design and create their own group, per, group projects to be able to understand prototype design in the first year. In the second year, we specialize a little bit more where we begin to design mechanical components and understand more about electronics. So we have some specific modules that are general engineering and physics modules, such as mechanics and machines or solid mechanics, that's interested in forces being applied and stresses and strains. But we have specific modules for the mechanical engineers, such as in thermodynamics, we have dedicated lab experiments equipment here, where we begin to understand about heat, heat flow, for example, or different types of internal combustion engine cycles. Other experimental lab apparatus, we have fluid mechanics, where you can see you understand about fluid flow in pipes and manufacturing project, where in this one actually there's a practical laboratory where the students have to design a mechanical clock. So you can see here the students have designed this, they've actually got the pieces laser cut it, put it together, and the idea is this clock has to keep time over two minutes, which is actually a very difficult thing to do, but it begins to pull together some of the theory and the different practical components for this uh, for this module. In, in second year, we also begin to learn some more industry recognized software. So we have, for example, SolidWorks, which is a program decided to, uh, dedicated to creating 3D CAD models. So you can see some examples here for the automotive. We have helicopters or robotic hand where we design individual parts and put them together to make a functional assembly. So that means you can then understand about how the product works in reality and you can simulate how it would work before you would manufacture it. One of the unique things about our program is that we are a center for accreditation in SolarWorks. That means all of the students get a chance to complete what's known as a CSWA. So that means if you pass this test, you get listed on a global database. And that means when you graduate from the program, you really are quite a bit more employable because if you have got a, a recognized standard in CAD design. So if you wanted to become a, a design engineer, for example, this would really help you get that job role. SolidWorks is also quite commonly used in simulation. So we have, if you create this CAD model, you can simulate forces being applied to the model and you can see areas of stress as indicated by red here, or we can simulate what heat transfer from one part to another or computer fluid dynamics. So we can simulate air flow through different valves, for example. And these are just the few, few of the things you can do with this, this software. You can also create engineering drawings, which is used for manufacturing. We, it's very important to understand that as a graduate from this program. In second year, we begin to specialize a little bit more as well from the software side of things. So understanding microcontrollers, where microcontrollers you can connect various different sensors. We get a little bit more in C++ coding and also in more complicated prototype development. As an engineer, it's very important to understand about engineering materials. So we have some dedicated labs in the third and the fourth year to be able to, for you to understand that. So in relation to ceramics, polymers, or metals, for example. So we have uh, tensile tester machines where you can pull a piece of material apart and you can begin to understand the forces and the strain that's applied to it. Other material properties such as fatigue, hardness, creep, and diff applying different heat treatments to different metals. We have all of this dedicated equipment for you to be able to do these experiments. So it's it's a real shame you can't be on campus to see this, but this is all facilities that we have in place in the background for you to, to, to understand engineering. As Robert mentioned briefly, we have then in the third and fourth year, we have dedicated modules which distinguish between the mechanical engineering and the mechanical engineering with renewables pathways. So we specialize in a little bit in the solar and water resources and management which as Robert said, is very an upcoming industry inside of uh, Scotland and also within the UK agenda for sustainability. And we have some other modules as well in relation to wind and marine energy and electrical power and the grid. 
One of the uh, good things about our programs is that they are both accredited by the Institution of Mechanical Engineers and you actually get a ch chance to join them as a student when you join in year, year one. In the third year, we begin now to get more uh, relations with industry and we do that through the problem solving industrial visit. So it's known as the PSIV. So basically the students, we call a large industry uh, advisory board and the students get to go away, away a way to uh, meet the industry in, in small teams where they get a tour of the facility and they go in and the industry gives them a problem to solve. So it's a real life problem and the student, they basically they work together to solve that problem. They communicate with the industry and they go back and they present their solutions. So their CAD models, their different solutions that they've created through a 10 week uh, placement. After the 10 week placement, I think most, some of the students, they managed to get actual summer placements with the industry and it's quite competitive. And a lot of the students in the past have then went on to convert those summer placements into real life jobs with the company. So it's a good opportunity to get to know industry. So just to give you an example of some of the industries that we work with, we've got some large multinational companies that you might recognize. We have Rolls-Royce, Jaguar, Sony, BP, and these are are big, big companies. And we have some local, more local companies which are still very big and you might realize that they're actually placed in Dundee, but our students can go and visit them, such as Finesse for control systems. We had Foodmec, which is just based across in Fife, not far away. Routermead, for example, as well. In terms of other modules and what we get to learn, so engineering design is a very important subject for our students and we have to dedicate equipment and we begin to learn a little bit more about embedded systems where you can connect various different sensors and you get a more complex uh, understanding and knowledge of coding. And again, don't worry about coding. If you don't understand it, we will teach you the various uh, steps to be able to apply that in various different projects. Also understanding about some uh, designing of circuits. So creating schematics is very important as an engineer, where if you create a, a, a circuit, a printed circuit PCB, uh, understanding the component selections, then you can actually manufacture that in the building and we can put that together with the CAD model and the 3D printed model to make an actual product to, to test and, and to reflect on its, its qualities. Last year, we also implemented something new into the program where we introduced WeBot robotic simulation package, where you can begin to design CAD models in, in the simulation package and you can program it, you can simulate, and then you can transfer that across to the real life design. So you can compare both the simulation practice the simulation package and also the practical package as well. So whenever you graduate as an engineer, uh, specific companies will ask you for skills and IT skills is one of them. And um, we have a software such as MATLAB here where you can begin to simulate robotics, for example, where if you have a simulation package using the Simulink, you can then understand how the movement of robots can be, uh, can, can happen in real life. So we have got uh, practical labs which begin to match up the simulation and both the practical movement of robotic, robotics. In the fourth year, so in the fourth year, I know it may seem a, a very long time away, but if you have an interest in an engineering field, now it's time is really to complete a project in the fourth year with the help of a research supervisor. So these are a few of the projects that I myself am interested in. It's my personal interest as well as research interests. And you can do your own or you, there's a choose from a list of 50 projects. But personally, I'm interested in cycling. So I've asked students in the past to be able to develop a low cost power meter to be able to evaluate the power generated by the cyclist. So it involves all the different things we've done in the past, such as electronics, uh, understanding the different design and where we can create prototype then to place onto the bike, as well as app development a little bit as well for this type of project. Other projects we have, for example, we have the development of a device to reduce tremors for Parkinson's disease. So if you have Parkinson's disease, the patient has an essential tremor of about six to 10 hertz in their hand. But maybe we can de design devices to be able to go onto the hand to be able to cancel this tremor to improve, improve that for the patient. Other projects, for example, in industry, augmented and virtual reality are becoming very much part of industry. And we need to engage in that as design and mechanical engineers. So for example, in a augmented reality, we can project a hologram and you can see some examples here where we begin to interact with them using your hand. And this can be quite fatiguing over time. So 
a project design and trying to design different ways of working with holograms. Simulation as well, uh, also very important as a mechanical engineer where you can begin to design components and then you can apply forces to them and this can generate stresses as indicated by red here in these designs. And then maybe you can go away and you can analyze that and you can redesign the component. Or the same is true for fluid dynamics. So if you have fluid flow over a bike, it causes drag. Maybe we can design different types of bicycle frames to be able to re uh, reduce drag, so to be more competitive for competitive cyclists. Other softwares that are commonly used in the industry is one that's known as ANSYS, and you use that through the mechanical and the CFD solver. And you can do various different simulations. And you can see here an example of fluid flow over a Formula One car. Finally, a few more lab experiments that are completed in the third and the fourth year. Um, we have ones that are in relation to control and dynamical systems where we begin to learn about lab view and design various different types of block diagrams and using the front panel. And we have dedicated equipment such as this vertical takeoff and landing and lots of different types of uh, experiments that the, you guys be able to complete to get that knowledge that's required for graduation. Robert mentioned it uh, briefly before, but we have uh, the former student racing team and we just talk a little bit more about it. It's a student led society where the students really uh, they, they generate, uh, they organize themselves with the faculty advisor and they get to design the ca a car and bring it down to Silverstone and race against other UK universities. It's a great opportunity for students to be able to meet students from different universities and also employers. So employers go to this event and they can recruit from university students to be able to um, to assess their skills. So you can see example in the bottom left here where there's a video and it shows some of the things that the students get up to. So you can see them designing a car here in super quick time and putting all the components together. Or you can see them driving the car and testing the car before they would bring this car down to Silverstone and compete against the other universities. So this is just a shortened video, but the full video is actually available on the VFERS platform where you can begin to see uh, yeah, everything the former student team get up to. So we have lots of different societies within the university. So we have the Drive Dundee, the Aeronautical Society, which is one that's designed to build an autonomous drone that can take off and land by itself. And we also have DUSA, which is an extremely, part, extremely important society for being able to carry out social activities, which I really recommend you, you get involved with when in your university. Just to talk about rankings very briefly, so I'm very pleased to say that the University of Dundee has achieved to be eighth in the UK, and this is in the Golden Age ranking for the time, Times Higher Education World University ranking, and that encompasses 271 institutions from 49 countries. Other university, other rankings that are quite important, so we have the first in Scotland for the Graduate Prospectus, and that's the Times and the Sunday Good Times University Guide 2021. And if rankings are important to you, then just to say what we are top in Scotland for the proportion of graduates entering highly skilled employment. That means that the students leaving our degrees really get top quality jobs in the industry, not just within Scotland, but also within the UK and also globally. So I'm pleased to see also we're on Twitter and we are also on Facebook. So if you want to find out what's happening within the engineering disciplines, then please go onto this, these websites or Twitter to find out. And one more thing is actually, so for today in this open day, there's another event that's available for you guys to find out more what's happening within mechanical engineering. So on the VFERS platform here, I can just show you briefly, we have a, an options along the top here where we've got an exhibit hall. So if you click on exhibit hall, what you can do, it'll bring you to the various different booths that have been set up on by the university team. So there is a booth for science and engineering, so it's the School of Science and Engineering. If you scroll left or right, you can go onto that booth and if you click on it, you'll be able to access the videos for our discipline. So there's lots of videos there to talk about student experience, talk a little bit more about the facilities that we have uh, for, for you guys and a little bit more about the introduction and the programme itself and student experience. So it's very important to understand about student experience and, and why different students have come to Dundee as well. So I would like to thank you very much for listening. I'm not sure there's um, any question and answers available at the moment. Perhaps we can have a look.
uh, I think we're a bit low in Q and A's. Has anybody got any questions we would like to talk about uh, briefly? If you have any questions, we are open. Normally at this stage we say, Keith, you must have answered every single question. You know, if, if nobody's got anything, it means you've done such a good job of actually explaining it. Possibly, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> well, I think actually for time, time purposes, we are actually quite close to. Oh, are we OK for a few questions? I think we are 10 to 6. Yep. OK, so let's see if we have any questions. Uh, all right, so there's one or two questions maybe coming in here. Let me see. We have um, maybe for yourself, Robert, we have a question that talks about what kind of opportunities do the University of Dundee offer that are different, better from other top universities? OK, that's a, that's a very good one. Um, so yeah, so I mean, at this moment in time, because it's an open day rather than a post application visit, which we'll be doing in February, you'll be looking to see not just which university, but what kind of degree you're doing and trying to select from those that are on offer. Um, I would encourage you to go to as many open days to see what universities have to offer. But certainly in the case of Dundee, we've already, probably already pushed on this one before, which is the fact that it's very much practical led. You know, a lot of universities, you'll be sitting in a classroom like you are at school or college and you'll be lectured to and that will be it. Maybe demonstrations will be shown, but you don't really get that kind of practical led hands on um, experience, which Dundee really kind of prides itself. You know, from the get go, you're involved in team activities to actually engage with problem solving. It's what engineering is all about. It's about solving problems as and when they come about, and that can be in multiple different applications. And that's what makes a good engineer. It makes them an entrepreneur. It means you can go into industry or set up your own company and very much be at the forefront of that particular sector. Um, so that's the first thing. So, I mean, the fact that every year group has an opportunity to work as a group or in their final years on an individual project and it is research led teaching and research led um, uh, practical experience. The second point I suppose is the opportunities at Dundee. We're the only Scottish university to link um, an engineering group with CERN. So that particular partnership that we set up about five years ago means that we have a direct relationship with the Large Hadron Collider. It's the largest experiment in the world and we get to go there and actually get involved in the engineering principles, designing new experiments and designing how the, the particle accelerator actually operates. So a fantastic opportunity for students to see that firsthand, but then also all the opportunities we have with our partnerships with universities around the world from China to the US, again, engaging with different cultures, different societies, and allowing the students to get that experience during their undergraduate time here. So lots of opportunities to basically broaden your horizons and use the time at Dundee, not just to educate you, but to grow with it and to become um, well-rounded engineers and get a good job at the end of it. So I suppose that kind of answers it in, in part anyway. Uh, yeah, I think it does. Robert. So we actually have a, 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 we have a question here as well um, in relation to are interviews going to be held virtually or in person? So that th that will be a more of an admissions question, I would I would I would guess. So if you go onto the VFERS platform after this, you can actually ask the admissions. So I talked previously on the booths, and if you go, I'll go backwards. We can see they got the exhibit hall, but there's actually an admissions booth being set up, and specifically to ask these types of questions for. Inter interviews going to be held virtually or in person. Typically, we um, would not. I can add. I, I I can add a bit to that. We don't do interviews as such yeah. for engineering. So some of the vocational based um, degrees like education require an interview and maybe medicine as well. We have about oh, 600 applications for probably about 60 or 70 places. So as a first kind of um, shortlisting, we look at grades. So basically doing physics and maths. We can then shortlist from that particular list and then beyond that we can then start just you know filtering out those who um, would make good engineers and then offering places on the back of it but there isn't a, an actual interview the interview is kind of done through the open day where you interview us and and we then gauge from that whether you have the right um, qualifications the right mindset to become a good engineer 
Um, so hopefully that answers it. But yes, as, as Keith says, go to the uh, admissions page and they'll give you the more formal process for applying through UCAS to get uh, one of the positions at Dundee. Thanks very much, Robert. We have another question actually, and it, <clears throat> it relates to what books should undergraduates read to prepare for this course? Okay. So. So again, there's, there are there are book lists, aren't there, Keith? So the the published book lists every year, but you don't have to pre-purchase any of these. Again, we're assuming knowledge at a certain level coming to Dundee, and most of the course material is online. You know, through both our hybrid and blended t teaching, the PowerPoint slides and the recordings of uh, lectures are all accessible to the students either before or during the actual allotted timetable. Um, so therefore, you don't need to actually um, acquire any books or do any pre-reading on this. The library, however, has copies of all these books. So again, to save you money, you don't need to buy up all the books um, before that. You'll have access to them and again, have online versions of it. I think Mastering Physics, or sorry, Mastering Engineering is a book, a textbook that we use quite heavily in years one and two. Uh, but other than that, each module will have prescribed text to help um, supplement the learning you're doing. So if you want to know a bit more than what's being taught during the lectures, uh, there are book lists associated with each module and th th that's readily available to those um, uh, to the students. That's, that's great. Thank you very much. And we have another question. So what companies do students work with in their industrial placement or year abroad? So we discussed that Again, briefly. I think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Keith, you kind of mentioned a, a whole list of kind of big multinational as well as kind of local companies. I think a, an interesting one is things like uh, Dover Fueling Systems, which people haven't really heard of. Uh, they're based in Dundee and, and they supply uh, a third of all European um, uh, four core petrol pumps. So the petrol pumps you see with all the livery on them, either Shell or whatever else, come out of Dundee in, in most cases. And of course, they're trying to develop new um, processes and technologies now as as cars move away from conventional fuels, you'll probably now see that we're all using E10 petrol rather than E5 petrol. So they've had to kind of retrofit all their petrol pumps to, to have that in their livery. Um, but also they have uh, blue diesel, LPG, and they're now looking at charging points as well. So that company in Dundee does a problem solving visit with, with our students every year, along with things like Food Mech and Gore, who do Gore-Tex. They're all based in Dundee as well. Um, so the big, big employers in Dundee, um, and we work with them um, with you guys as undergraduates. And as Keith says, you get your name known very early on, and this, the, 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 these companies are always looking out for their next uh, future employees. So it's a good way of actually deciding which company and which area of engineering you want to go into. Thank you very much. And let me see any more questions. <clears throat> I think we have time for one more question. Um, yeah. Do you have links to Formula One team for the industrial placement? So I think again we alluded to that. We we, we have a number of links to um, some car companies like Jaguar Land Rover. I think last year you had a student specifically that was working out of Renault. Um, but for Formula One, um, we have a you know through the Formula Student uh, competition, we have a number of students who've actually gone into some of these industry. In fact, we have an alumni who's working I think in Mercedes, um, and they offered a visit to the students to go down there and actually go around their um, Formula One team have a look at how it's done properly um, and, and evidently share some of the ideas that are coming out of the team. But yeah, so it, it you know, from year one, you can be involved in the team. We're trying to actually de design two teams, one which do a design based project for the first two years and one which is actually then building and entering the car in years three and four um, because there's a lot of work going into it. And evidently when you come in first year, you may be not um, familiar with all the kind of um, uh, elements required to design, build and then drive one. Um, if you want to be a driver of the car, uh, you just need a driving license and then you do a certain number of hours on the test track because evidently driving these uh, racing cars is quite different from driving a normal car. So once you've been on our simulator and then round the track for a few hours, you're then fully qualified to take the car out on Silverson track. We, we always know if we've got a good car because everybody wants to drive it. When we have a car that either breaks down or it is a little bit you know, difficult to handle, you then find students going, no, I don't want to drive it this year. <laughs> oh dear, but anyway, good questions. Thank you for that, Keith, that was excellent. I think we're probably now at the end of this particular session. Um, so I'll pass it back uh, to you.
yeah, just like to thank everybody else for for everybody for joining really today. So hopefully you've learned a little bit more about the program and about the University of Dundee and what you could get up to if you if you were to join with us for both the programs. Um, I think at the moment we're going to have an, another session to uh, repeat for any other students who are applicants who who want to join or, or couldn't join at, at, at 5 p.m. So you're happy to. I'm um, happy to stay stay along and hear again of our our talks if you want to, <laughs> or um, feel free to go on to VFairs actually and to check out the videos. So we have eight videos there, and it's about fifty minutes worth of material, but it really talks about the students' perspective and different facilities and the kind of experience you would have if you were to come for the program itself. So very, very worthwhile going on to the, the booths and to be able to click on the video, search for mechanical with renewables. So that all the videos will be listed under that format. So I think, Robert, we um, give ourselves a minute break, do you think, or? Yep. And thank, thanks everybody again for attending. And as I say, you can stay on. We will be doing the talk again. Um, if you've got any questions and answers, please just publish them in the Q and A session on this one. But we'll be we've also pre-recorded some of the material and the PowerPoint slides we, we're giving now, so they're they're in the VFed as well. So again, if you've missed any of the slides, you can go back to that and 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 see them um, as a pre-recording. So, but this one's good because it's live, and if there are any questions, we can answer them in person. But yeah, we'll be coming back live in maybe three minutes. I think we'll start again about five past six. So either stay on the line if you can wait three minutes and then we'll be starting the presentation again. Thank you again. Thank you.